Democrats. Democrats, friends. South Africa is a proud nation, and we are proud South Africans. I love our country. I love the miracle it gave to the world in 1994. I love our never say die resilience, that just when the world and others are ready to write us off, we stand right back up again, dust ourselves off, and prove them wrong. I love the beauty and splendor of every corner of this great land. I love our constitution that stands as a proud beacon to the world, defending individual freedom and providing a framework for accountability. I love how it boldly proclaims to the world that South Africa belongs to all who live in it, united in our diversity. One South Africa for all. And I love this party, a party in government in a province and in towns and cities across the length and breadth of South Africa. But not just any party, our party. One nation, one future. A party where Jew, Muslim, Hindu, and Christian can serve together, where it doesn't matter if you're gay or straight, male or female, English, Afrikaans, Isikosa, Hell, even if you're Apple or Android. <laughs> this is your home. And our party is stronger, not in spite of this diversity, but because of it. Because where other parties divide with hate, we unite with hope. And I'm proud to stand here today as the chief whip of our parliamentary party. 102 dedicated and determined individuals from every single corner of the country who rally forth every day in the committee rooms and plenary halls of parliament and their constituencies to ensure that we defend the constitution and hold the government accountable and prevent and present a compelling offer of hope and change. And what have we got on the other side, the ANC? What have they left us? An education system that's broken and which fails our young learners a police service that is simply unable to take the fight to criminals in our neighborhoods and keep us safe, and an economy in absolute confusion because ministers fight each other in the same cabinet like a bunch of cats in a sack, while nine million of our fellow countrymen and women languish in unemployment. And a president who's so drunk on his Kool-Aid that he and his cheerleaders pretend as though he's some Cape Crusader that's flown in from planet Krypton to save South Africa when we know the brutal truth is that he was at the heart of the mess of the last five years. He was number two to accused number one. Joined at the hip, like Casey and Jojo, Rolls and Royce, Mills and Boone. And it's this sorry bunch that we hold accountable every day. And it's our DAMPs that have been on the front line of bringing these ministers to account and exposing their misdeeds. And every day, it's DAMPs who are standing up for ordinary South Africans. It's DAMPs speaking out for the poor, the downtrodden, and the homeless and unemployed. And it's DAMPs who are winning the debates on higher education, the economy, and social justice. It's little wonder that the ANC want to give themselves a three-month holiday from all this relentless scrutiny and accountability. And all of this underscores the essential role of the DA team in Parliament. The DA mans the ramparts of freedom in South Africa. And we will save our country because we serve it honestly. And our parliamentary team today stands on the shoulders of giants. The valiant struggle of, lone struggle of Helen Sussman, the long slog of Eglin and De Beer, and that team of seven led by that fighting campaigner, Tony Leon. The American slavery abolitionist, Wendell Phillips, told us that and I quote, eternal vigilance is the price of liberty. But he went further, and he said that the hand entrusted with power becomes either from human depravity or an esprit de corps, the necessary enemy of the people. And only by continued oversight can the Democrat in office be prevented from hardening into a despot. Only by an unintermitted agitation can a people be sufficiently awake to principle to not let liberty be smothered. And now, more than ever before, that now that the noxious narcosis of Ramaphoria dulls the journalist's pen, 
lulls the analyst's eye and weakens wary reason? Has the role of a vigilant and robust opposition been more essential or crucial for our democracy? Delegates, I assure you, there's only one thing that keeps both Cyril Ramaphosa and his newfound ally, Julius Malema, awake at night, and that is a resurgent, growing, and vibrant DA. It terrifies them. It terrifies them. So let's go forth from this uh, Congress armed with our policies and renewed vigor and keep them awake and continue to give them the fright of their lives every single day. But colleagues, we must not kid ourselves that the political environment has not changed where we are in opposition. Nor must we lull ourselves into the fatal complacency of incumbency where we govern. The game has changed and we face new challenges to both the left and the right of us. But in all these challenges lies huge opportunity, but only if we allow our values to guide us. In the fire of great events then, we will, uh, we will unleash the fire of future purpose within ourselves. And this is not the first time the game has changed. It's not the first time that the reset button has been pressed. And we've grown stronger after each of these phases because our values provided that compass setting out our ideological true north that has carried us through. And even as on occasion the political horizon dimmed from view and the storms raged around us, it was our steadfast adherence to our values that ensured that we always emerged stronger, wiser, bigger, and braver. We have to demonstrate that the DA will lead, voting for us will lead to a better life for our people. For them, we must build a party that truly represents their hopes and aspirations, and we must offer hope for a DA tomorrow. We need to do this by becoming an alternative to the ANC, not an alternate ANC, setting clear blue water between them and our DA. And there's no better way to do this than to root our offer and ground our arguments in our values. Let us be perfectly frank with ourselves and the country that we want to lead. Our party stands for something quite different from the race to the bottom on offer by the African nationalists and the economic freedom fascists. Colin Eglin said it well over four decades ago when he declared that our distinctive difference was that we believe that the individual is the touchstone of value in South Africa. And of course, we all have different identities, different communities. We speak different languages and we worship different gods. But we celebrate this broad and great diversity, one South Africa for all. But there is a difference, and it is crucial to our renewed journey to know this, between group membership and group think. Identity politics where we say to our citizens, no matter what you want, no matter what you dream of, what you work for, you will rise collectively or you will not rise at all. That is the enemy of our cause. In our liberal vision, it's up to individuals to shape their own destinies, choose their own futures, and dream their great dreams. Trumping the community over the group or the group over the individual is the direction of the Donald and the Julius, and it speaks to the worst of the haters and not the best of the hopers. And we must not walk one inch down that road. And if we ground ourselves in our values and we focus with determination, passion, and vigor on succeeding in this mission that Musi has set us on, then nothing and nobody will stop, stand in our way and stop us from building a new majority in South Africa. We can have all of this, and we can have so much more, but only under a democratic alliance-led government. And so, in these new political times, we will be challenged. And yes, friends, we will be tested. But together we've made it this far, and together we can face our democratic future with confidence. So whether it's in parliament, our legislatures or councils, or in our constituency and in our communities, when the going gets tough, the Democrats get going. And it is this that reminds me of the words of Winston Churchill, who said that even in the darkest hour of severe challenge, we must never, never, never give up. Democrats, we must never, never give up fighting for freedom. We must never, never give up fighting for fairness. 
We must never, never give up fighting for opportunity. And we must never, never give up fighting for diversity. One South Africa for all, united in our diversity. So friends, Democrats, let's go out united, brave and confident in our party, and finish this great mission that we've started. Let's get out there together and bring the new beginning for our people and this great country, South Africa. One South Africa for all.